So as far as streaming services go, it wasn't too long ago that we got the figures out of Netflix. They managed to smash expectations, share price surging, helping majority buy traders on our end. But they're not the only ones in town. It's the more diversified uh, media conglomerate with Disney up next. Uh, February 7th, after market close, and that means it's time for us to do an earnings preview. Hello, everyone. Monty here, market analyst at IG. Let's go ahead and get started because it has been quite a busy quarter for the House of Mouse, or I should say the House of One Less Mouse after the, the uh, copyright expiration of Steamboat Willie. Not going to get into that. Don't worry. But we did have strikes come to an end. Uh, that means that it's time to get back to business in terms of content production. You had Comcast, the the uh, the, uh, the acquisition uh, for Hulu, and, that, and also in uh, November, you had the launch of ESPN Bet, the potential I say potential, the Reliance Industries merger when it comes to its India business. And uh, as a side note, you had the activist drama, the three-way battle that's expected in their upcoming shareholder meeting. That's going to be in the spring. That's Don't worry, that's later, but it is something to know. But overall, in terms of Disney, there have been so many different strategic plays in terms of how they can they can move forward. Uh, you know, succession when it comes to its CEO, ESPN, what are they going to do with that? The legacy TV and potential asset sales, as well as further cost reductions, because they're expected when it comes to their streaming business, that they're they're hoping to turn a profit by the end of the fiscal year. So, you know, what are the, what's the strategy there? Is it going to be a, a more of uh, reducing costs, reducing content growth, but charging customers more? How much more room do they have to run, especially after what we saw from Netflix with that 13.1 million subscriber growth? Clearly the envy in the town. But let's go in and take a look at the numbers. Uh, this is for the final quarter of last year, which for Disney would be the fiscal first quarter. The expectations are we're looking at earnings per share growth of a dollar, which those figures have been revised lower. And if you compare it to what we saw for the same period the year before that, it's 99 cents. So not looking at much growth year on year for the same quarter, but for revenue, slightly better, but again, not much of a difference from 23.5 billion to 23.7 billion. And if we're looking at it quarter on quarter, I mean, they, they recently split it up into the three segments, uh, entertainment experience and sports. So we're not going to have a year on year comparison, but quarter on quarter expectations that we're looking at growth for all three. And when we look at analyst recommendations, they're still holding net buy, eight strong buy, 15 buy, six holding, two sell, and none in strong sell, with an average price target amongst them of over $103, which is above the current share price. By the way, all these figures, courtesy of Refinitiv or LSEG. And uh, when it comes to clients on our end, they've been holding extreme buy buys for quite some time. Remember, the share price, it wasn't too long ago that it was near pandemic lows. It did manage to go up when uh, when they released their, uh, had their uh, latest earnings release in, in, the, in the final quarter of last year. And, and price managed to average in a slightly higher zone. I will bring up the chart later. But uh, in, overall, it has left both traders on our end as well as investors wanting and waiting for more. Yes, it's a it's a plus that it managed to move higher, but if you compare it to the overall market comp uh, performance, if you compare it to Netflix's performance, if you compare, compare it to the Magnificent Seven in general, you know, traders are majority buy. They manage, you, you, we saw majority buy buys drop there because you had price gains enticing a lot of these longs to finally be able to close out. We haven't quite had that when it comes to, to Disney share price. And that means that still in extreme buy territory on our end. And when it comes to short interest, by the way, in exchange, over 27 million share, it's been rising and it's gotten, it's breached 27 million. These are levels that we haven't seen since June of 2020. So we're talking about pandemic uh, highs in terms of short interest, though in the grand scheme of things, around one and a half percent. Again, uh, when it comes to short interest, courtesy of Refinitiv or LSEG. And I don't like to delve too much into technicals just because it's a fundamental event. So price can easily crash, you know, breach or break through key levels with relative ease. These are for the, this is for the weekly timeframe. So they're a bit larger. They're not the daily ones, which you'd expect to break with, with, with significant ease as market makers withdraw their liquidity. But weekly ones can also break. If you're looking at it absent the fundamental event, the overview is a cautious one. Yes, there is some short-term positive technical bias, but it is a cautious one. And a lot of times that means that conformist strategies, you're not going to go against the move, whether selling at the first resistance or buying at the first support, unless it's after a significant reversal. And in the case of something like earnings, you might want to even wait until the second levels or, or for a significant move beyond the first resistance or first support before going opposite the move as, as price comes down or if it, if price goes back down in the case of the first resistance or, go, or, or recovers off of the first support. And what I want to do next is just want to flip over uh, to IG's trading platform and take a look. I just want to say that we do have our, uh, this is a recent uh, addition powered by tip ranks. You've got yourself um, what their expectations are in terms of analysts and as well as uh, their price targets. And I want to just flip over to the chart to give you guys an idea. This is the weekly time frame to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of reaching uh, these lows and how, although we're, we're in a slightly higher zone, it still has been a net struggle for both traders and investors on our end, especially when they're looking at the competition, when they're looking at, at big tech in general, or looking at 
key stock indices. So that's about it from our I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck out there and happy takes.